I want to welcome you to a teaching today that um, many people believe and truly think that the mark of the beast is something that will go through your hand as you see here and you have many think that it'll be marks on your forehead which is they saying is the mark of the beast so the mark of the beast the truth through precepts we're going to get an understanding today we're going to go through this teaching based on precepts the mark of the beast at the beginning where they talking about the inserting of the chips or the marking on your foreheads is this true so what do it mean that you'll be able not also to buy or sell or is this the doctrine of doctrines the doctrine of lies remember who fed this to you this is a Christian theology so again is this true in fact is any part of that is true you have even camps teaching this in different type of flavors based on what they're not sure of. So they go to outside resources to show you these marks and to show you how they can insert chips and do these things and how you'll be marked on your foreheads and all these things that will happen. However, is it true? One must remember that you have to use precepts and precepts is your key to unlocking the answers to all things within the Bible. Precepts is your key. Precepts cuts through dice, slice and remove all falsities of everything that is untrue. His communication with us is through precepts of scripture. This is clear. However, you have others telling you the Most High told them this through a dream or through a vision. The Most High spoke of this only to them, personally or private, again, which is not true. Second address, 1676, and the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith Yahweh. Let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. The Most High will be our guide as long as we continue to keep his commandments and his precepts. This is a form of the word of the Most High because it's commanded of us to keep them. If not, it's sin. If you're going in scripture and you teaching according to what you think and how you interpret the Bible, you're sinning. If you teach it based on, on uh, the understanding to where you interpret what it's saying, you are sinning. It's clear in, clear in scripture. You have to keep the commandments <clears throat> and the precepts because they go hand in hand. So if you're not, his precepts not keeping the commandments, you're sinning. See, precepts are so important. I need you to really understand what's going on. I need anyone to show me one church, one, one church, the physical church that they go to that named as a church. Show me one that holds to precepts and not their own theology. I guarantee you, you can't show me one. I wouldn't even say, can you show me a hundred? Show me 50 or show me 10. 
I'm asking to show me only one that hold to strictly to precepts, precepts of scripture on what you need to know. Psalms 119 and four, thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. It's a commandment. Show me who's keeping them and teaching them to you. Through precepts. <coughs> Precepts is our guide, as, as Adri stated. This is to keep us from all false truths. There is no such thing as secret doctrines. They have camps that teach you to where not to show up or they won't give you their locations because it's a secret. They need to know you. They need to understand who you are. You have camps who in churches who give you their interpretation through other forms of material to show you to call themselves strengthening the Bible. Peter says this, 2 Peter 1.20, knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. First, remember this, nothing in this Holy Bible is of a private interpretation. If one tells you the Most High told them something in this book to tell you and you can't find it in Scripture, you need to remove yourself of that person. They're giving you private interpretations. They're giving you private things to control something and to operate within you another spirit. The Most High don't operate in such fashion as you see within Scripture. People do lift themselves above you, and the Most High will lead you by the Holy Spirit to guide His people towards all truth, and He will take over. So as He gives people who are giving you precepts, He also gives you the understanding. So as you're going through it, you can understand. But being in examples, as others follow, even back where false prophet was compared to the day with teachers teaching lies, giving understanding of another Christ. Let's be clear with that. Second Peter two and one, it says, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there be false teachers among you who privately should bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them and bring up themselves swift destruction. So we need to get, we need to really get an understanding here. See, false teachers are within all churches today, giving you one line of scriptures and injecting a doctrine of Satan with this, which is sin. And just as they project these bold-faced lies, repungent doctrines of men, they mainly teach error by opinion, not respecting the fundamental of instruction that's set by Yahweh under the doctrine within Scripture. Teaching of the soul of destruction, even turning against the Most High, who also brought them into the truth. See, because you have to understand what this just said, because many of us missed it as we were just looking at it. It said, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies. But here's your key. Even denying Yahweh that brought them. See, he even brought them to the truth. But they decided to go their own direction. See, let's not, let's not mis, mis, mix up this. See, because Yahweh brought them and some is still going to go the other direction by doing and teaching you their flavor of what they want you to see. As many shall follow their peculiar ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Are you seeing it? See, many will follow these pernicious ways, as it's, as it's clearly saying. So these pernicious ways, meaning corrupting 
or undermining ways. These are highly injurious or destructive and very just destructive to the soul, actually keeping you tied to the beast when you think you tied to the creator. This is what this does. However, and through covetousness shall they with fringe words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now for a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Meaning what? How you wanted the desires as such as power, money, careers, meaning the necessary things the selling point to you. And you will make a fringe of it in spoken words. What is this saying? These name it, claim it doctrines that they do in these churches. So you make a fringe of that. You fringe that onto yourself because you name it. Then they say you name it and you claim it. That's your fringe. I decide to, to be millions and millions of dollars. And I want, I'm going to achieve this through whatever, whatever form or fashion that you direction that you're going to take. You make a fringe of that. The name of the claimant doctrine. You fringe that. Making it damnable sure with the most high. You make your damnation sure to hell with the most high by doing that. Though not telling you the truth, but using precepts for understanding, many today believe the mark of the beast is by chip or tattoos, and it's neither one. See, this is the lie of the beast. This is the lie that they want you to believe. This is what they show you frontwardly to get you to believe in not of the truth. So we're going to come out of the darkness and these false prophets will speak saying these are the words of the most high and they are not. It's why it's so important to understand precepts. Deuteronomy 18 and 20, it says, but the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name. We have prophets that many of them out there and saying this is this this word is coming directly from the most high which I have not which I have not commanded him to speak making itself completely clear or that shall speak in my name of other gods even that prophet shall die. So these are going to come out speaking in the name of the Most High, speaking lies. People who believe in the prophets, and they're going to believe them. You, you can see them today. They're going to fill up churches. They're going to fill up camps. They're going to fill up a lot of places that teach these kind of lies. I don't care how you look at it, how you flip it, how you script it out. This is what they're going to do. Because they are not teaching you about the most high they teach you about another God not the God of Israel not Yahweh this is the problem you have many people who have came to you and many and many people who have came and spoken out telling you about these these, these doctrines and how they can come forward come, come, come forward and they talking about this God of Israel and they're not Deuteronomy 13 1 it tells you if arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or a wonder and this is some of the problems that most people even have today just with this based alone because a dreamer of dreams came and said came and said I had a dream today that white children and black children are going to go hand in hand and saying that greater sound free at last, free at last. But was the other side ever free? Or was the other side ever in bondage? But many believe that this is true. He has seen the mountaintop, this dream of dreams. This is the problem that most people have. 
but most people sit there and say that he was great among the people. Not seeing what destruction he was doing behind and even what he had done when he took Margaret Singar, who was the, the founder of Planned Parenthood and used him, and he clearly knew this, to put in our neighborhoods. Dreamer of dreams. These are things we need to understand. Verse two, in the sign or the wonder come to pass, thereof ye speak unto thee, saying, let us go after other gods, because he wants you to come after him, which thou have not known, and let us serve them. See, these are the gods we'll go after we move in the commandments of the Most High. In the sin, by this, this God. What is saying? This, this other God says you can eat anything. He's cleaned all things. It was the Old Testament. No, it was not good for you. But now I have cleaned all things to where you can eat all things. And eating all things, it won't even defile your temple anymore. So back then I was this brute in telling you what you cannot do. But now I allow it and I'm allowing you guys to do it. I have cleaned all things for consumption for you because back there it was not properly done. We're moving all law set for us. We're moving now you being under grace completely. You're no longer under the law. This is what's being taught. You removing all laws and you can't, how can you get even achieve grace and you don't even recognize why you're receiving it for breaking the law? These are things we really need to just understand and come clear to and understand. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that, of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. Even today, 50, more than 52 years ago is when that speech went out and you don't see nothing change. For Yahweh, your God, proveth you. He's testing you to do what? To know whether you love Yahweh, your God, with all your heart and with your soul. He's checking you to see where is your heart are you looking at a man? See, don't follow these new ways. The most high letting this happen to test you, whether you will follow him in his ways or you will be set in stone in the other ways and for these other guys who is just an idol. Then you are showing him who you love, him or yourself. So the most I need to place marks. This is where it goes on. You need to place marks on his people. And guess who else did this? Satan also did this. Satan placed marks on his also. The mark of the beast, what is it? So we need to find out exactly what this mark is. Because the most high has a mark Satan has a mark. So we're going to start unpacking this. We're going to start looking at this to understand exactly what it means and find out what the truth is. This is what we need to do. Revelation 16 and 2. It says, And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a newsome and grievous sore upon men who had the mark of the beast and upon them which worship his image. So now we know an angel poured out a vial upon the earth, meaning what? Meaning we have to always understand what is saying always within context to understand what the verse is saying because this is the importance of understanding what the language is and what the meanings are of the words that he's using. This is part of the problem when most people read the Bible. Why? Because most people like to use 
dictionaries of today to get the understanding of the words that's being used back then, which you will always run into a false doctrine. This is why it's so important to use precepts. Precepts shows you to how you can use the Bible as a dictionary, as a commentary, all in one. However, when you go into other books to pull that, that going to run you into a false doctrine, false understanding. Because the vowel meaning this is the same in significance as plagues between good and evil. So one must remember a vial are vessels containing one or the other, good or evil. So anything containing something, so the word that signifies whatever is contained, vowels is this in this chapter, and it's about the influx of, 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 of truth, which is good in the church body, which will discover all evils and falsities. Men who worship the beast also had the mark of the beast. So there was some newsome, meaning destructive in all things. Pouring this vial upon earth was making the evil distinct to hell appear before the most high. That's what this was saying. But we're gonna get a little bit more because we're gonna understand how this happens. Let's go to Job to get the understanding. Job 26 and six, it says, hell is naked before him and destruction have no covering. This is why the vial had to be poured out. Hell is completely naked before the most high the covering because there was causing others with severe pain, suffering, sorrows, putting heavy burdens and guilt, submissions, you name it, they did it. So when these vials were poured out on, the, on, on earth, it showed who they really are. This is what's happening. Let's go back and get some more understanding there. It says, first went out and poured out the vial upon earth and fell a newsome and grievous sore upon men which had the mark of the beast to do what? To show who they were. So now once it was poured out, it fell on the, uh, it fell on the coverings and the covering as, car as, as carcasses that you can see that's directly under it. That's why he also, when you see how which I said, you have beautiful sepulchers on the outside, but inside you're full of dead man bones because he have to show who you are to show the true man that's under the covering. The mark of the beast, we will see and be seen by all. See, this will even be on the rich as well as the poor because the mark of the beast has no selection of taking rich or poor. It don't matter who comes in. So you can be rich or you can be poor. How can we understand this? Revelation 13, 16. And he calls all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark, a mark, in their right hand or in their foreheads. You see that? See, you're going to receive a mark either in your hand or in their forehead. But we have to unpack that to understand what this is saying. See, because this is one of the most misunderstood verses in scripture, even today, but we're going to watch. However, you're going to see the great rich, free slaves will be subject to getting what the mark in their hand or on their foreheads. Various levels of involvement spiritually is what this is talking about. So no matter what it represents, we got to figure out what's going on. So no matter what, this represents various level of degrees of involvement in the spiritual state. For instance, when angels strike men with blindness. We have to understand that. Some was small and some was great. How can we understand this? Genesis eleven nineteen, And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, Genesis nineteen eleven, both small and great, so that they were themselves to find the door. So when the angel came to remove Lot and his family, and said they wanted to rape these these angels that they, they came to Lot and these men had seen them and they wanted to know them, have sex with these men. Men that want to have sex with men. However, what ended up happening when they came in and they was trying to steal barge in the door because they wanted to bring those men out, it didn't matter if they was rich or poor. He struck them all 
with blindness. It didn't make no difference between who it was because rich and poor was also at that door. It made no difference between the two because what? They were all evil. This is the point to understand. They were all evil. Doing what? Revelations 13 and 16. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive the mark in their hand or in their foreheads. So, rich or poor can receive the mark of the beast. This is speaking spiritual wealth, not worldly wealth. Christians teach this possession of the day, which rich or poor and great and, and even being a slave. But one must remember the most high works in parables. These are who are educated in scriptural knowledge about the most high and the ways he wants you to behave. Are you with me on this? We have to understand that parable educates you. Parables is clear cut. Parables works in precepts. Parables tells you everything the most high wants you to know. However, the wealth also has a negative. Look in the Bible, represent those who have the greatest deal of knowledge, but you have some who uses it in selfish ends. This is what we have to, this is what we clearly have to understand. Verse 17, in that no man might buy or sell, save he that that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Many of us just missed it. Just on this verse alone, that's just as I was saying, these are some of the most controversial, misunderstood verses in, the, in scripture. That no man may buy or sell, save he. And what he's saying, might, 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 Understand, no man might do it, say no man will. Let's, let's, we have to pick this down to break it down to the smallest denominators to make sure we all understand and we all on the same page as we continually move forward. Then no man might buy or sell, save he, meaning what? As people will in teaching the church, it says might, meaning this, given power and ability to do these things by virtue of strength and skill, resources or authorization, nothing more. To do what? Might by yourself. Meaning what? In spiritual tent. Meaning what? Teaching you. Because they're selling you a true doctrine or a false doctrine. But we're going to go deeper because it's saying only he. Save he. That's all that's saying. Save he means only he that had the mark. This is why it's so dangerous when you're using outside resources because you're saying save he and it means most people are going to get screwed up. And they mean only he. Why? Because you... Most people are trying to take 2018 understandings and definitions and inject them back 5,000 years ago. This is the problem. So, in acknowledging and refusing to confess the wrongdoing, this is the mark. Meaning what? When you acknowledge, you have acknowledgement and refuse to confess of your wrongdoings, it's the mark. And we're going to show you that. Why do you think it's so important to remember your faults? It's extremely important. This is, this is to signify one who would be acknowledged to be reformed unless he received the doctrine of faith, only means of salvation, or the faith through remembrance for forgiveness. The same as was with Cain, the same you have with Abel. Cain was a tiller of the ground and Abel was a keeper of sheep. We're going to break this down to where we can understand and we're going to come back. The 
way we do here, always we get a foundation and then we go through and we break this down because we all have to understand exactly what is happening. Cain was one who tills the ground, meaning what? He prepares the soil for the planting of the crops or the law. Understand what Cain's position was. Make sure that we are clear with this. Cain was a tiller of the ground. He prepares the soil for the planting of the crops. Abel, Abel was a keeper of the sheep under the law. These two worked the same as who? As John the Baptist and Yahweh John prepared the way and Yahweh was the keeper of the sheep. Let's first, let's, let's, let's go to Matthew. Matthew 3, starting verse 1. It says, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. So John the Baptist was preaching in the wilderness. This was clearly in Scripture, and it's telling you right here he was preaching in the wilderness. But watch what happens. And saying, Repent, saying, Repent, remember, remember ye. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. See, because if you can't remember this and you can't remember what you have done wrong to the most high, you will not be able to come in. So to remember the kingdom is at hand. He was what? He was tilling the ground. We need to remember the sins that we have done against the most high to make sure we can seek forgiveness for the sins we committed towards him. To receive a clean slate. This is he that was spoken of by prophet Elias saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare, prepare ye the way of Yahweh, which make his path straight. This is what John was doing, was making the path straight. He was putting everything down on the ground, making sure we clearly understood what was happening. John was making our path straight by what? By remembering our sins, what we did against the most high, preparing us for the way of righteousness is what he was doing. Clear it more. Verse four. In the same John had his remnant of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loin and his meat was locust and wild honey. Now, here again goes again. Most people sit there and say, well, he was out there eating locusts and wild honey and it's speaking in a spiritual state. Why? His meat, his meat was locusts and wild honey. He's speaking in celestial terms. How are we going to find this out? Locust signifies falsities in the stream. Locust which consume the truth and good in the church and a person. Meat is making himself many as locusts eating truth. Because they consume. They consume at great vast amounts. So when they come into an area, they eat up everything. All green vegetation. Understand this. Nymph 315 and it says, Then shall the fire devour thee and the sword shall cut thee off. It shall eat thee up like a canker worm. Like a canker worm. The evilness. Make them sell, make thyself many as the canker worm. But watch this last part. Make thyself many as locusts. This is what we was got to go through. This is what we have to do. And it says more. Verse 5. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the regions round about Jordan. He preached this baptism of, re of repentance, telling them to remember our sins. So we can put them all out at one time. 
This is what we have to confess these sins up and make sure that we are remembering everything we have done against the Most High to where we can receive forgiveness. And it says, and we're baptized of him in Jordan, doing what? Confessing their sins. You see that? See, John was a porter. He, he, he's like a, a servant who opens the door. John, John was the one who prepares you for the shepherd to come in. See, John made way for the true shepherd to prepare us. So we had to put all our cards on the table. So when he comes in, we can confess of our sins to where we can remove them all to receive forgiveness and turn towards righteousness. It says, John 10, 2, he, but he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Yahweh Now, he is the shepherd. He clearly makes this known. And he goes on more. To him, the porter openeth, John. And the sheep hear his voice. Who? Yahweh And he calleth his own sheep by name. He leadeth them out. See, John is the porter who opens the door and of the sheep of the voice of the Most High who was in Yahweh all by remembering their sins, asking for true repentance. This is the way that you truly hear the voice of the Most High. You will also understand his word even right now. Some do, some don't. And he goes on more. And when he put forth his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. So if you are his sheepfold, you will know his voice. See, John was just the door opener. He the one prepared you for the way and telling you, hey, before he gets here, you need to remember all the sins that you have did so once he gets here, you can confess them. You can confess your sins so you have all your sins on the floor to where he can come in and he can remove those. He can remove all these falsities within you because he's the true shepherd. John 10, 7. Then Yahweh shall say unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. He is the door to all true understanding of the kingdom of the Most High. He is the door. But it goes on more. And all, all that ever came before me are thieves. I don't, I don't think some people are understanding what this is saying here. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. See, this, that, that one verse is a teaching within itself. See, all that came before him were thieves. So, the same as Cain, however, the true sheep did not hear them in the teaching of the doctrine of Satan. Why? Because Cain tried to steal this. Esau tried to steal this. We're going to unpack this as we go to understand why, why he's saying it in this, in this form, in, in this fashion, in this way. We have to understand what's happened. I am the door by me. If any man enter it in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture to where he can eat because he's the true shepherd. I mean, going in and out of a matrix. This is why this is saying it this way. John 10, 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. He's giving you all the information you needed right here. See, the same as Abel, as the same with Yahweh. The only difference here was both had different mothers and fathers. Cain and Abel had the same mother and father, but Yahweh and John 
had different mothers and different fathers. See, Yahweh yeah, had to bring forgiveness because it says, it don't say that, that Joseph and Mary was sinless, was, was, was holding to all the laws of, of, the, of Yahweh. But if you look at John, you look at Zechariah and Elizabeth, they was perfect in keeping the commandments of bringing the law. Yahweh Shai brought forgiveness. That's a teaching within itself. So, but we're going to move on. But I just want you to understand the difference between the two. So we have the same as your Abel and same as your I Just saying that we said having different mother of the father. Cain rose up against Abel of the flock. Because Abel was the keeper of the flock. Abel never knowing it even was his own brother. A man of his own equal to kill him. Let's say this again. Abel did not know that his brother, a man of his own equal, was the one that will kill him. Psalms 55 at verse 12, it says, For it was not an enemy that reapproached me. See, Abel didn't know. He said, then I could have bored it, because then he could have prepared himself for it. Neither was it he that hated me, that did magnify himself against me, against me. Then I would have hid myself from him, the same as we see with Jacob. So if he would have known, he would have been able to hide himself or to remove himself from his brother. However, Cain never showed hatred towards him. Then he could have hid himself at the time of need. It goes on more. But it was thou, it was thou, a man, my equal, my guide, the preparer, and my acquaintance, a man of his equal. He was the tiller of the ground. He was the guide for the sheep to him, Abel, his brother. But it goes on more. We took sweet counsel together and walked unto the house of Yahweh in company. We went together. They took sweet counsel, meaning advice, advisor, legal matters, walking to the house of the Most High in company. Meaning what? Where he tells you, Matthew 18, 20, where there's two or three are gathered together in my name, I will be there in the midst. As Yahweh was the shepherd and the noise voice, and to them he was prepared by the way, and they followed him. And Yahweh was the keeper of the sheep, making it completely clear. So, as it says in John 10 27, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Feeding them what? Feeding them what he needs them to know. Meaning what? I give them, I give unto them eternal life. And they should never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand, feeding them the word of life, food of eternal life. All you need to prepare yourselves for the kingdom of Yahweh. This is why Yahweh shall say, some and none is greater than John. This is why he says that. Let's look at this. Luke uh, 7, 27, it says, It is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger, singular, before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. See, he, as we say, John prepared the way. He didn't say messengers. He said he sent his messenger, John meaning he was the tiller of the ground to prepare for the seeds of truth, removing all false teachings and lies and opening up your heart for truth. And this is why it's not, it tells you, for I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. 
none. John wasn't out to, to do in anything on Yahweh Shai. But he is the least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. None greater than John the Baptist. He came to do a job, he did it to the letter. He was a tiller of the flock, but what about Cain? Did he prepare them for the way of the people as John did? So we need to compare these two and why he even says this. Let's go Genesis 4 and 5, see this comparison. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell. His offering was not, not accepted. Why? Because he brought fruit of the ground. Spiritual mean what? He brought the fruits of the ground. Spiritual side is deeper. Cain was offering from the earth and not from heaven. It was commandments of men, fruits of the ground, earth, not of the most high. The most high told Cain, if he prepared the people well, your offering will be accepted. And Cain wasn't doing that. See, this is why Cain compared to John is so different. Cain killed the shepherd and did not prepare the people. However, John did. And when the shepherd came, what happened with John? This is the difference when John came on the scene and do what Yahweh I did. John 30 and 30, uh, he says, he must increase, but I must decrease. Not looking to be overpowering over anything. See, the ministry of John must decrease and the ministry of reconciliation must increase. So all the Eden was removed from the garden. Cain was to prepare the people and Abel was the teacher. So in this case, John was the preparer and Yahweh was the teacher. He that coming from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. You see that? He goes on more. And what he has seen and heard, he testifieth. And no man receiveth his testimony. See, his testimony is a confession, is the covenant between the Most High and us. This is what he's talking about. And he goes in a little bit more as he wants us to understand what these testimonies are. And he that received his testimony has set to his seal that Yahweh is true. So anyone received the testimony of the Most High, his seal is upon him for that testimony. Meaning what? This is why he gets this. For he whom Yahweh has set speaketh the words of Yahweh. For Yahweh give not the spirit by measure unto him. So the ones the Most High sent speak the words of the Most High. However, Cain killed the shepherd, his brother Abel. Cain prepared you and Cain as John was the firstborn. Esau and Jacob as with Jacob was the firstborn. Abel as Jacob as Yahweh was keeper of sheep and was not born before the preparer, none. None of them was born before the preparer. The preparer came first. However, we had Cain who was upset that his brother was offering was accepted and his was not. He had he had to do all he had to do was really just to preach the word of remembrance and to lead them to his brother, the keeper of the way. So but what did he do? He killed the shepherd. Abel. Let's look at that. Genesis four eight, it tells you, and Cain talked with his brother. They took sweet counsel together. We just seen this in Psalms. Just seen it. And it came to pass. So over a course of time, when they was in the field in an open area, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. He killed his own brother. And if Abel would have known this, he just said he said he would have been able to 
bear this. He could have prepared himself and could have hid himself from this. So there was no secret place to where this was not known. It was in the open field. It tells you right there. And we're in the field. And Cain rose up against the brother and killed him. Remembering that it was in the field and not in a secret place. This is why it goes on more. And Yahweh said unto Cain, where is Abel thy brother? And said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? See, he didn't come. The most high didn't come. Asking like, you know, I can't find him. He's, he came up to him. He said unto Cain, where is Abel? Where is your brother? Where is he? See, but asking Cain where he is. See, this is the famous word that's always used. Am I my brother's keeper? Why did he say that? And why did he make that statement? Why was the statement made for in this manner? Am I my brother's keeper? And, and, and many people misunderstand this because of what? because of not understanding doctrine and precepts of scripture. Because Abel was the keeper of the way, not Cain. Am I my brother's keeper? No. That's why Cain said that. But the people was angry with Cain. So, and then what they did, they worried about if Cain would be found, and then he felt that they were killing. Why? Because Cain was the keeper of the way, so they wanted to make Cain the keeper. Is what one of the problems was. So Cain was worried if anyone found him, they would kill him. Because what he done to Abel, the shepherd, and the people knew that Cain done. And then you will see Cain made this statement, and we're going to get the precepts of that also. Let's look at this. Solomon 5, 1, Solomon 1, 5. It says, I am black, but calmly. See, this is Abel. This is Cain. O ye daughters of Jerusalem. He's talking to Jerusalem. As the tents of Gadar. Telling you how black he's, he's black. As the curtains of Solomon. But it goes on deeper. Look not upon me because I am black. Because the sun looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. Really? They made me the keeper of the vineyards. So they had made him, but my own vineyard have I not kept. So what he was to do, he didn't keep. He was over all other vineyards. But the keeper of Eden he did not keep. This was a problem. However, he came into his own, and his own laws were set forth, which is fruit of the good ground. But Israel, Eden, he didn't understand those teachings, and he did not teach in those ways. He was teaching as sinners, publicans. This is why he worried if anyone would find him, they would kill him. Because his speech would give him away. Let's look at this. Genesis 4, 11, now thou curse from the earth, and thou have opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. Cain was cursed in the ground which received Abel's blood, and he was cursed in the, into the ground, and the whole new teaching within itself, just on this right here, but we're going to go through this, and then it says in verse 12, when thou tillest the ground, when you preparing the people, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. So it's not going to come with power as it used to. A fugitive and vagabond shall be in thy earth. So Cain was a tiller of the ground, going out preaching the word, which we have, but now we're going to have no effect on anyone. A wandering of someone who has fallen away from the truth, a vagabond meaning like a highway man, a beggar, or on the street teaching false doctrines, 
because he is not a keeper, but he was to lead them to the shepherd. That was his job. But this is what Cain was going to end up be doing. And Cain said unto Yahweh, my punishment is greater than I can bear. That's why he says this. So he knew his position. He had, however, this curse will reveal Cain and others will want to kill him. Let us go and follow other gods. This is why he was not going to have that kind of strength to do this. It goes on more. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from thy face of the earth. And from thy face shall I be hid and shall I be a fugitive in vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. You see that? See, the Most High is letting you know. So he's telling them. So if anyone who knows Cain on the earth, who done, they would kill Cain for, for slaying his brother Abel, the keeper of the sheep. So the Most High did something. He did something for Cain. Let's look at this. Genesis 4.15 And Yahweh said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slay of Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And Yahweh set a mark, set a mark of the main one. You see this. See, he set a mark upon Cain. At least anyone find him should kill him. So, if anyone tried to revenge Abel's death, the Most High would, would take that on him sevenfold. And the Most High set a mark upon Cain, so we are no. So what again, what is the mark? Job thought he had the mark upon him and only later to find out he even had issues of the mark. He knew that mark he had. Let's look at this. Job 719. How long will thou depart from me? Nor let me alone till I swallow down my spittle. So Job was asking the most high, how long will he depart from him? Why? He goes on more. I have sinned. What shall I do unto thee? O oh, thy preserver of men. Why have thou set me as a mark against thee? So that I am burdened to myself. You see that? See, this is the problem that most people will go through. A burden. So he's saying that he has sinned and the most high set a mark upon Job again. What is this mark? The only day to find out that Job was really just self righteous. We see that in Job thirty two one. It says so the three men ceased to answer Job ceased to answer Job because he was righteous in his own eyes. See, these men was able to see this in Job. The mark of unrighteousness, committing sin against the Most High, because this is what Job was doing. And most people don't think that that's what he was doing, but this is what Job was doing. See, Job knew what his kid was committing sin against the Most High. But what did Job do? Job was killing animals daily, thinking he was covering their sins for what they was doing. And that was a schoolmaster, but he was knowingly killing animals for a sin they can they can they, they continually committed daily. His kids sin, not the animals. That was a schoolmaster, but he continually do it. And Job was in sin. That made him self righteous. Okay, if they do it, I just kill another animal. That's self righteous. See, this is the mark of the beast. See, the works of the flesh 
is the marks of the beast. These are not sealed by the Most High, but the seal of Satan through the works of the flesh. So we're going to see our people with this mark and see how it goes. See, because the works of the flesh is going to always manifest itself. Always. This is how you see the mark. This is how. Galatians 5.19, it says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, made known. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Le See, these are marks of the flesh, which is marks of the beast, are made known. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness. See, these are marks. Then you know these are works of the flesh. Goes on more. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, ill emotions, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Works of the flesh, marks of the beast. See, you name it, it's there. So you show your markings by the seal of the beast because this is what you're doing. And it says envy, murder, and drunkenness, rivalings, and such, of which I tell you before, as I also told you in time past, that which, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. You see that? See murdering? See none of these markings would inherit the kingdom of the most high. These are markings giving you one the ability to distinguish one between the other, the, 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 the seal between the most high and the seal of Satan. These are markings that will not inherit anything from the most high. First Corinthians 6, 9, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, or nor adulterers, nor infirmant, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Unrighteousness is marked in seals of the beast. You are showing everything through your works of the flesh. See, you have people who will eat and do anything. And then you sit there and say, you don't have the mark. And he told you not to do it. So you had the mark of the beast, so you had the mark of God. You had the work of the flesh, you had the work of, the, are you doing the work of the spirit? See, those are markings of the beast. This goes on more. Nor thieves, nor covetousness, no covetous, nor drunkard, nor revilers, nor extorturers, shall inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. Cain did something, as we know, to have a testimony in the name, the child, the testimony himself. Genesis 4.16, And Cain went out from the presence of Yahweh and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden, on the east side, stayed on the east side, where which were all Israel was. That's all this is saying. So, what did he do? And Cain knew his wife. Cain knew his wife, letting you know two things. Cain was already married when he killed his brother. It didn't say Cain took a wife. It says, and Cain knew his wife. So Cain was married. So guess what? It tells you something else. Other people was already here. Not Adam and Eve had more children. I was telling you right here, Cain knew his wife. It was already people here. And she conceived and bare Enoch and built the city and called the name of the city after he had named his son Enoch, which is already what that mean and she conceived and buried the testimony and built the city of the testimony is all it's talking about, which we will also understand when you look at Hebrews 11 and 5. By faith, Enoch was translated, meaning he died early. That's all it's talking about. That he should not see death. That he will not go to the lake of fire. But guess what? Because Yahweh translated him for before his translation, 
he had this testimony. What? He pleased Yahweh. Enoch only means testimony. However, Enoch pleased the Most High, which we have, which is the problem which most people have today. So when we go right back to Revelation 16 and 2, the first went out and poured out the vial upon the earth and fell a newsome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, which is upon which worship his image. So as I said earlier, the vial was poured out on the people covering, uh, covering that will fall. Showing the true man under the covering, the mark of the beast, will be seen by all. As with Cain. He put a mark on Cain. Same as he have a, a mark on, on people. Because he's going to see it through the works. He's making himself clear all the time. So some will be rich, some will be poor, but the mark of the beast. And this is who he shows you who you are. So all the marks of the beast is this. Let's go to Zephaniah 3, 1. Woe to her, woe to the spirit that is filthy and polluted in oppressing city. So these are newsome and grievous men who had the mark of the beast, who worshipped the, the image of Satan, were defiled and unclean, oppressing city, acting in acts of oppressing and in imposition of unreasonable burdens. You can have them and they do this in many different fashions and ways. I'm talking about they do this either in burdens, taxes, services, cruelty, or under servitude, and you not knowing you under it. But it goes on more. Verse 2. She, the spirit, obeyed not the voice. So you not that spirit that you have in you is not obeying the voice. She received not correction. She trusted not in Yahweh. She drew not near her God. That spirit did not draw towards the Most High. Why? Because it listened to the spirit of Satan. Her princes within her are roaring lions. It's letting you know who they are. Her judges are evening wolves and gone not in the bones till the morrow. Meaning what? These spirits are like roaring lions. They will plot, plan secretly, devise to accomplish any evil, treacherous end to someone. It implies to careful foresight in planning in complex schemes. This is what they do. Let's look at this. Let's go to Ezekiel 22, 25. It tells you that in conspiracy for her prophets, for these evil prophets, in the midst thereof, like roaring lions ravaging the prey, that they devour souls that have taken a treasure and precious thing, they have made her many widows in the midst thereof. These are markings that you have of the Most High, like roaring lions, and are afraid who devour the souls by false teachings and false doctrines. This is what they do. And they're going to be in the midst of the people. But they are, ravaging, they are roaring lions, ravaging wolves. This is what they do to the flock. How? Verse 26. Her priests, her priests have violated my law have profaned my holy thing. What? The temple. You. They have put no difference between holy and profane, neither have showed difference between unclean and clean. They have hid their eyes from my Sabbath and, have put, and, and I am profaned among them. This is what they do to show that they have the mark by the works that they do. How are you going to tell me that you will ingest anything that is unclean and you will say that he cleaned it? So you make him ingest because if he cleaned it there in, in the New Testament where we can actually ingest it, don't you think he was unjust to the people in the old? If Adultery people died back then. You think adultery is cool today? See, violated not by teaching it with the precepts, the scripture for understanding. Do you think that it's cool today? You think that it's all right to give one verse and proceed to, 
to, to drum up an entire sermon and get the precepts of men for their understanding they proceed to run one verse and proceed to tell you a, a story about what you need to do and to violate the most high's laws they're done away with They have profaned the temple of God, putting no difference between clean and unclean, making their self clean within their eyes. That's what they do. Verse 27, and it says, her princes in the midst there are like wolves uh, raving the prey to shed blood and to destroy souls to get this honest gain. Many of them had changed the name. They had changed many of them getting away from tithes and offerings, just saying donations or support. They are marks of the beast. These are people who are like unto wood, devouring the flock of the most high. They do whatever it takes to destroy your soul and to gain the world, proving your body belongs to Satan by breaking the laws of God. Just making yourselves clear. Let's go back to Zephaniah and get some more understanding. Her prophets are light and treacherous persons. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. They have done violence to the law, making it clear. They have done violence to the law. These evil, these evil teachers they like to betray the trust and to receive it, and they like to pollute the sanctuary the most high. However, they will appear as what most people think. They like to come and they like to talk smooth, and the first thing they want to do is tell you that they are from God and are not. They appear, they like to wear uh, collars and have the white collars around their neck. They like to do many different fashions to make you think that they are of God and they are of Satan. They will come humble as a lamb and will become ravaging wool because they will ravage you, put heavy burdens on you, and you will think that you are in the truth and you are in a lie. They will appear as angels of light. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. He can come and do these one-liners, flipping you up, tossing you to and fro, and you will be ravaged by them all day long. This is Satan. He will make you pollute yourself, only appearing as an angel of light, making one think they are good and are not, telling you the commandments are done away with and are not. Our, 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 our mix-up is the Most High brings judgment to light. <coughs> However, Satan has no shame in his game. This is what we do. This is what we're going to continually do. As Satan has transformed himself into an angel of light, you have many people who will sit there and fall over backwards and believe that some of these preachers that commands and demands your money and writing many books to help you learn more about God and God don't need help. So you don't need to write a book to help you understand him. He said, I will give you pastors according to my heart to give you knowledge and understanding. So if he's going to put those there already for you, he's telling you right then, I don't need you to write a book. When you do this, then you'll get the understanding. But guess what? They'll sit there and run to you. We're going to tell you how to get closer to God. And I wrote a book on it. An angel of light who is of Satan. To pull you away from what? To pull you away from the book. Many of you guys, I know you got a memory of this. This is just a little a break on this. It's, it's just to show you. I know many of you guys might have seen that movie, Portageist. The first movie, Portageist, where the little girl ended up going into the TV screen. Crazy, but went into the TV screen. However, 
the parents were trying to get her out, and they went and got this lady, a soothsayer. And the soothsayer tells tells her that he's telling her to come to the light. She kept trying to go to the light. And she's telling the parents, that's the beast. That was the beast. And all she was saying is, he lies to her. So you have many people, and, and, and many people need to understand, why is it that only one third is going in? So how do you believe all these churches, everybody's going? Because some of them, they're going to go loyally. Many people going to step right into the church tomorrow. You have many going to step into churches today who are being lied to, where they can't see something in Scripture. And the first thing they're going to do is think that they have eternal life. And it's silly in itself because they marvel not because Satan will transform himself into an angel of light. He will come harmless as a lamb. Back to Zephaniah 3, 5. Jess, the Jess Yahweh is in the midst thereof, will not do iniquity. Every morning do bringeth his judgment to light. He faileth not, but the unjeff know no shame. So the Most High is just about righteousness and holy. His judgment is just and righteous. He will bring all judgment to light no matter what. Meaning what? All the ones that follow the ones who was a Satan and you thought he was an angel of light wherever he goes you go. Because you're going to do the works of what he's teaching you. He teaching you not of the Bible. I have cut off the nations. Their towers are desolate. I made their streets waste that none pass by. Their cities are destroyed so that there is no man, that there is none inhabitant. So it's none there. He's going to destroy these cities. Where are we residing? We have to truly understand what, we, what we're coming about. I said, surely thou fear me. Really? And I receive instruction. So their dwelling should not be cut off. Whosoever I punish them. But they arose early. Really? And corrupted all their doings. So no matter how much that you have many of us out here we we'll teach, no matter how much the Most High is going to punish them because what? They're going to continue to corrupt themselves early in the morning. they just get up a little bit earlier to corrupt themselves. To do these doings. To do these, 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 these unrighteous things. Verse 8, Therefore, I will Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith Yahweh, until the day that I raise up the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations. His determination, so his determination, and all this is saying, the most high decision of settling the end of all controversy. That's all he's saying right there. For my determination is to gather the nations. So my decision to settle all ending in controversy that I may assemble the kingdoms and pour upon them my indignation. Really? Let's unpack that little spot right there. So he's going to gather all nations and kingdoms and he's going to pour out his humiliating treatment and anger on all the earth it will be it will be devoured. See, because for all earth shall be devoured with fire of my jealousy. So the first angel gonna sound out. 
that trumpet. And he's going to pour out that vial. And once it's poured out, let's watch what's going to happen. Revelation 8, 7, it says, The first angel sounded, and followers held in fire, mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth in the third part of the trees. Third part of the trees was burned up. Trees, Israel, was burned up. Was destroyed. A third part of the trees, celestial talk. Was burned up. And all the grass, all the green grass was burned up. You need to go see. You need to go understand where the white and other people come from. Just to tell you who grass is. And all the grass was burned up. However, grass of the earth is other, including Israel is not the seal of the mark of the Most High. The mind of the Most High, you don't have that, you're going to have a problem. This is all he's saying. See, because he's going to save some of us. Because he's going to do some in who did us in. So he's not doing them all. But watch. Let's, let's check this out. Let's go to Revelation 9, 4. It says, And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any grass thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of Yahweh in their foreheads. So the grass and the other people, including trees of Israel, did not have the seal. This commandment was given me. But watch what he does here. He goes on. And to them was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented. Who's saying this? The Most High. They should be tormented. Five months. And their torment was as compared as torment of a scorpion. Let's unpack this a little bit. So you're going to be tormented. Tormented, comparing as a scorpion tormenting you. So we need to unpack that a little bit. So for five months, you're going to be tormented as, as, a, as a scorpion when he striketh a man. So what happens when a scorpion strikes a man? We need to unpack this because he said this is how it's going to be. Meaning this, scorpion signifies a deadly persuasion. When a scorpion stings a person, it induces sulfur. Which is, which is doing what? A state of near unconsciousness or insensibility. This is what it does. And in the limbs, it cannot be cured, which can cause death, but you're not going to die. So, Yahweh and as he said to the 70 that he sent out, they would have power to trample and over serpent and scorpions, that's what he was saying, and over the power of the enemy so that they would have nothing that would, can never hurt them. But in here, what it's telling you, it will be a scorpion to where you, it can cause death, but you're not going to die. You're going to be tormented. Tormented. I'm, we need to understand this. Verse 6, and in those days, men should seek death. You're going to want to die. And shall not find it. And ye shall desire to die. And death gonna flee. You trying to die and death running from you. Are we are we getting this? See, and, and, and even some of the Gentiles, we have many of them who have destroyed Israel. Israelites. They have took them, hung them, castrated them, removed limbs from them. He's not destroying all you guys. He's gonna save some of them for this for this very purpose. So you can be tormented. And as you want to seek your second death, you can't find it. You gonna see death as you can say hiding behind a tree laughing and you're going to try to run to death and death going to run from you. 
and not let you die. You gonna wish you can die and you can't die. See, the Bible don't say, will tools be there to where you can try to kill yourself, which you might put them there. I don't know, but I'm just saying. And the problem is, those men gonna seek death and you still can't die. This is the torment that you're gonna have. You can do whatever you wanna do and can't get death. You're going to beg for death and death going to tell you peace out and roll out. This is what you have to watch for. The ones who sit there and really didn't do the commandments of the most high. But then you have these that's also who was destroying people who was created in his image. Because you're showing how much you hate him. You're going to be tormented as with the scorpion. We have to understand what's going on. We have to understand you're going to try to seek death and you can't get it. Jeremiah 8, 3. All death shall be chosen rather than life, but by all the residue of them that remain of this evil family. You're going to choose death that remain of this evil family that has the mark of this evil family which remain in all places whether you are driven to them saith Yahweh of hosts. You're going to try to choose something. But this won't even be a choice. This won't even be on your plate. Revelation 6.15 And the kings of the earth and the great men that and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bond man and every free man hid themselves in dens and in the rocks and mountains. You see it don't have no, you see it's not using a choice. Kings, all, all these, look at all these rulers. You see how he's not making a choice. You have kings of the earth. You have great men. You have rich men. You have captains. You have mighty men. You have bond men. So letting you know, slave, you have free men. Because see, you have some slaves who help kill other slaves. See, all that are Israel, it's not all Israel. So they're going to hide in dens of rocks and mountains. But watch what happens. Verse 16, it said to the mountains of the rocks and rocks, fall on us. <laughs> just, just fall on, fall, just fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. Because the most high, his son is not coming here playing. See, you have many Israel who don't even believe that he has a son. And they deny Yahweh Shai. They want to hide from him now. He sits upon the throne and from the wrath of the lamb, the little lamb, the one John spoke about. The one John said, here come the lamb that take away the sin. Here come the lamb of God that take away the sins away from the earth. Here he come. They want to hide themselves from this. But guess what? That's the son. See him, you need to kiss him. You need to understand who he is because it tells you Psalms 2 and 12, kiss the son. At least he'd be a little angry. See, you see he's angry now. Because that's how he's coming. He's, he's, he's Letting you know ahead of time how he's coming. And ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. See, now you, we just getting a little bit 
on what he's going to be doing. See, if you want to get really scary, go read Isaiah 63. Because it tells you, blessed are they that put their trust in him. See, we need to understand. See, if it's wrath is kindled but a little, so what he's saying is, if you don't have this seal, and you had a seal of Satan, with the works of Satan, that mark signifies your acknowledgement and your confession, either of the Most High or your confession will be of Satan. Having the mark of the beast in Revelation 16 signifies the acknowledgement of faith alone, confirming oneself in it and believing according to it. The right hand symbolizes everything in the person relating to the power or of his intellect that's through the faith and his right hand symbolizes that his power and he refuses to repent. Which is signifying the power that he had. Because your power is by your hands. So if you didn't receive the mark, and this saying the mark of your hand, it's meaning that you had the power to do what you was doing. That's the mark. The works that you're doing. Let's look at this. Revelation 9 20 it says and the rest of the men which would would, would not kill these plagues yet repented not for the works of their hands that they should worship that they should not worship devils in idol of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk So the rest had the mark of the beast, still refused to worship the creator and wanted to worship these idols that they created, mainly themselves. They will continue to live in the pleasure of a fleshly life. This is what they do. But it goes on more. Verse 21. Neither repented of their murders. Really. Nor of their sorceries. Nor of their fornication. Nor of their thieves. You see this? See, this is the works of your hand, which is the mark of the beast. It's in your forehead because it's in your mind and you plan on doing it anyway. These are the marks. By your works. And they telling you that you're going to put a seal on your forehead and have something in, embedded into your hand. Those are the marks. That's silliness. But that's, guess what? Silliness, Christian, goes hand in hand. This is the problem. See, they continue to destroy lives and what they're doing, they spiritualize, fornicate, steal from one another. So the flesh is made manifest and with the marking of the beast, which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emotions, wrath, strife, seditions, heresy, envy, murdering, drunkenness, reviling, and such like. Don't ask me to repeat that, but in such like. The marking of the forehead symbolized everything in a person relating to the power of his will. Thus is his love for the forehead symbolizing love. Till we seal the servants of God on their foreheads. This is symbolically meaning that those who were separated and governed by truth sprang from goodness of Yahweh. And these were inwardly good. Sealing them on their forehead does not mean the actual seal, but distinguish you separate people who imply the goodness and love, and you do the works of that which is of love for Yahweh. And it symbolized which is the forehead, symbolized everything good that was in your mind, because this is why you studied the Bible. This is what it's talking about. This is why you hold to that. These are the people of the Most High. Revelations 22, 4. And they shall see his face. And his name should be in their foreheads. Should be in their mind. This, this, this is who they are. These are the blessed ones. These are the ones who have the right to the tree of life. And they have the markings on their forehead. That's why it tells you this clearly in Revelations 22, 14. Blessed are they. Blessed are they. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Revelation 22, 14. That they may have right to the tree of life. And may enter through the gates of the city. This is clear. Clear in scripture. 
you have the markings of the Most High. Why? Because you're doing His commandments. You're doing the works of the Most High. Through what? Through faith. You're obedient to the word of truth. How? Let's make sure we're clear on here. John 3.33, He that receives his testimony has said to his seal that God is true. So you're going to obey what he's saying. And if you're not doing this, then you have another mark. Because you're going to do another work. And he has a particular thing he want to call you. In Revelation 22.15, for all without, for all without doing the commandments, are dogs. So you're not doing the commandments, you're a dog. You're not running precepts, you a dog. So we can look at this how you want to do it. You're not running precepts in the commandments as we've seen earlier, you a dog. You're not doing the commandments or running the precepts, you a sorcery. You a whoremonger and murderers and idolaters and whosoever love it make it a lie. That's who you are. These have to be taken away. These are what you are. Revelation 19, 20 says, And the beast was taken, and him, and him that false prophet, and was wrought miracles before him, which deceived them, and had received the mark of the beast. See, they did these works. You're a dog. And them that worshiped the image, a dog were both cast in, in, alive into the lake of the burning, of, of fire burning with brimstone. This is where you go. Because you lie. You lie to his people. You had taught everything that was contrary to the word. You do these one-liners walking around. You have 20, 15,000, 20,000, 250, some have 10 people in their churches feeding them lies. Marks of the beast. You're going to be cast into there in doing it. The same as you have many that have been given gifts of healing to where they can heal people through the being physicians by through medicines and different things. And what have they done? They have taken it and made it out of a lie. This is your end. This is the end of, because everything that he put here was able to, to heal your body here. And now you even have so much corruption here. It's unreal. Sarah or Sarah, we see 38 and 3. It says the skill of the physician shall lift up his head. So that even the skill of a physician shall lift up his head telling you physical, giving you the appearance that the Most High was a doctor, but guess what? We have physicians showing you how they should be healing you of all diseases. And shall great, and shall sight of great men shall be in admiration. What? We look at doctors today as miracle workers. Gods, they're nothing more than men. People are delighted in being in their presence and are astonished from the working of their hands. Working of their hands. Understand what is going on. Verse 4. And Yahweh have created medicines out of the earth. Is that a lie or is it true? He's telling you in his word, Yahweh hath created medicines out of the earth, and he that is wise will not arbor them. So the ones who are wise will not arbor them. They will give them to you. Meaning what? These medicines created today, but they provide herbs that needed for the body. They do everything. Understand this. Cancer. Cancer by itself. You see in the 20s, all the way through the 80s, somebody had to know somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody whose brother knew somebody whose uncle knew somebody who had cancer. He was basically one out of 100 that contracted cancer 70 years ago. Today, we have one out of three that contracts cancer. Now you know somebody, if not, you have it yourself. Yahweh created medicines out of the earth and he that is wise will not argue. You ain't gonna hate them, you're gonna share them. 
the cancer society, whatever they call it, over their over their time span, had taken in trillions of dollars, and they still have not found a cure. And it's a fungus. He created, said everything of the earth to what? He said, don't don't hate them. Heal the people to show them the silhouette picture on how Yahweh came to heal his people that had filth. It was corrupted. It's showing you the same thing, the silhouette picture. But what have they did? They hid them from you to keep you embedded in sin. Greed. Greed to keep you in sin in the same degree as they're doing today. They never find any cures for, for cancer because that's one of their biggest money makers. How can you have cancer back then that should that was should have been high and should have even been dropping now, but now it's it's even on the rise. They 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 create they take natural food substance and modify it, saying they're making it better than God. Greed. They'll leave you sick and then let you die. Once your bonds run out. And they'll tell you they're coming close to a cure. You have women who do, they marching for breast cancer. You have women marching for children. You have men and women doing all these things for a colon cancer, for all these things, and there's no cure. They say it's out there. Really? So is man a liar or is God a liar? The skill of a physician shall lift up his head. The skill he gonna get big headed. The Lord created medicines of the earth. And he that is wise will not arbor them. This is what's going on. See, these are the markings of Satan. They letting you know who they are. Jeremiah 3 3, it says, Therefore the showers have been withholding, and there have been no latter rain, and thou hast hoard, thou hast a whore's forehead, and refuses to be ashamed. Marks of the beast. It's telling, it's telling you all through scripture who you are, you either for him or you for, for Satan. They continue to not even be ashamed of anything that they do. They do it openly. They have merit, they have uh, what they call them, the, 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 these the thons, these uh, marathons on TV. And having people who's truly trying to seek and to end something and they continually just take you for your money. And people do all this and get people to raise money. They get all this money, then they give it to this one entity and make them richer. And then we have Israel. They have food, so much of Israel, we become so hard here, we won't even listen to the Most High or to his words. Ezekiel 3, verse 7, it tells you. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee. They will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. See, we don't listen. That's the mark of the beast. It's clear in scripture all day long. We have to understand what we need to be doing. Behold, I made thy face strong against their face and their, thy forehead strong against their foreheads. He's putting this clear line in, 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 in the sand. In making sure that we need to hold on to what we do. As comparison, an adamant harder than flint, I made thy forehead. Fear them not, neither be dismayed for their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Fear them not, 
I made them. He has marked them. I made them. So don't even be dismayed at their looks. Period. You see this? See, this is clean. See, so he said that. He made it. So even though he did it, he marked them. So guess what? He gonna send them delusions. He gonna send them things. He gonna send things on them to make sure that they will continue to do what they do. Let's look at that. Second Thessalonians 2 11, it tells you, and for this cause, Yahweh should send them strong delusions that they should believe the lie. This is all he is doing, making sure he's separating the two. So you can see their markings to where you can see your markings. These receiving the mark of the beast will become the ones who believe in the lies. And it goes on more. And it says that they might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. See, all these are going to be damned. Who? As he said, it don't matter. Revelation 13, 16, and he calls all. He calls all. Who? Both great, rich, poor, free, and bond to receive the mark in their right hand or in their forehead. By the strength on what you want to do, he's letting you do it. You're going to receive the mark because you're going to do it by the works of your hand. Oh, obeying these false prophets, teachers, and teachers, and such. He's making this clear all the way through. Revelation 19, 20, And the beast was taken out, and the false prophets, and wrought miracles before them, which deceived them, which had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both was cast into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. You see this. So this is what he's saying. So all that he's throwing in there is what? For all without that mark are dogs, sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers, idolaters, whosoever love and make it a lie. All you guys going in there. But everybody sitting there saying, why are you calling me a dog? Because the Bible saying it. But guess what? The Bible says it. But let's see who says this. 16. I, Yahweh Shai sent my angels to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root in the offspring. I am the root. I am the offspring of David. I am the root. I am the offspring. Letting you know again, the lie that they sent you, saying that he's from the seed of God, is telling you, I am the root in the offspring. He is the root in the offspring of David. He's coming from the seed of David. As it tells you in Matthew 1.1, 1, 1. he's telling you this all the time. He's from the seed of David. But you have people telling you he's from the seed of God. He's telling you, and all you got to do is go to Romans 1, 1 to 1, 3. And he's telling you how he became the son of God, the actual firstborn. Here he's telling you, I am the root in the offspring of David. So again, you have people teaching a lie. To which many are going to fall for that same destruction because you have no love of, of uh, righteousness. So them will serve them. And then what he's going to do. You believe in the seed. Are you going to believe in the seed of a lie? You're going to believe in the seed of God. And them are the ones who will be the offspring of, of the most high. And those are the ones who will be given the pure language to understand and serve him. As it tells you in Zephaniah 3, nine. For then I'll turn to the people a pure language. No more in parables. Dark speeches. And they may call upon the name of Yahweh to serve him with one consent. This is the mark of the beast. This is something that we all need to learn. This is why it's so important we need to know exactly what we're doing and who we're serving. So hopefully each and every person understood what the market of beast is, what it is and what it's about, why we need and why it's so important to understand precepts, why it's so important to understand what the most high wants us to do. This is why it's very important. So with that, I wish that um, each and every person got some understanding from it. I really don't have um, too much time 
because I actually got to go over into the Moab because we actually got a second part for the Moab in the class over there. So we have to go over there and you know, we'll be going through some presentations there. So I wish that each and every person was uh, was richly blessed and based on his teaching here. And um, hopefully that you guys will continue to do your studies, but make sure if all, everything, if someone is not teaching you based in precepts and they're giving you personal theology, I will guarantee you they're going to run you into a false doctrine. It's automatic. One follows the other. The only way he works is with precepts. So with that, I bid each and every person a shalom.